This is Hadrian Radio coming to you from Free Catalonia, a KA Radio production. It is easier to fool people than to convince them that they have been fooled. Mark Twain. Good afternoon, Scotland. Good afternoon, people listening to us anywhere in the world. This is David Rabantos, and this is chapter 22 in Hadrian Radio, the only place where you're going to listen to the truth about the Catalan process, which has enormous effect on the fight for independence in Scotland and everywhere else in the world. In this chapter, we'll briefly mention the 300-year genocide that we're going under uh, Spain. We'll sum up what the objectives of Spain and its uh, international partners are, which the objectives are, the strategy, the teams playing here, sum up the process, so then we can go and to say what the, the present moment is, before we can go into some chapters like the imprisonment and victimization of the Catalan government, the strike we had this week, the demonstration on Saturday, and the uh, plan to march on Brussels the 6th of December. Then we will prove how no independence happened, and we'll prove it from the Spanish side of things on how they didn't react uh, as it was supposed to be. Then we're gonna clarify the position of the Catalan resistance relative to the snap mock elections of the 21st of December. Then we're gonna comment briefly on some other issues uh, happening here, like the interview of Carlos Puigdemont gave to Catalonia Radio, or my meeting with uh, infiltrated Joan Vives and Sule Vicente, which you've heard before in a number of chapters here. And then uh, what Tony Sule said about Amnesty International in relationship with the political prisoners. And we'll use that to explain how nothing is the way we believe it to be. And finally, with this uh, presentation of happily we're getting more people reacting to this program and they do uh, questions to us and we're gonna try to promote the English version more so uh, this truth that you won't hear nowhere else about Catalonia that is very relevant for the world there's a crack in the matrix here this crack in the New World Order armor and it's in Catalonia because we we happen to have a lot of information on how our side works for the other side so we are gonna put that victory because we the Catalan resistance are gonna deliver independence in 2018 or 2019 but not through the process that are rigged and everything we love our media parties uh, social uh, organizations uh, social media and international also parties organizations and media and WikiLeaks and Anonymous and anything you can name works for the system so this is uh, of huge importance that you help us make this program rich it doesn't matter if our core uh, nucleus of support is little but there's millions of people out there that need to know the truth not only about Catalonia but about how 7,500 million humans are deceived into fake conflicts or into conflicts that are real but people running the conflicts are actually in cahoots so we never have a chance to win those conflicts because those conflicts have been lost beforehand by the decision of a bunch of psychopaths that run the world so without much um, more to say as a preface I'll explain the biggest deception that Catalonia has ever suffered in history that is held by a fact that we need to put like this uh, Catalonia is suffering genocide from Spain for the last 300 years and it had some bigger episodes than others we've had Philip V and Philip IV and we've had Inquisition which worked not only in Catalonia but we had General Franco 80 years ago doing an uh, uprising and that brought in uh, Forty years of dictatorship, but after he died, um, we have had forty years of Francoism without Franco, where things were cosmetically uh, changed in the Lampedusian way to change everything, so nothing changes really. So, this three hundred years of genocide and occupation, and we don't say we say this as you know we talk for adults here, so we don't say this with 
resentment or with the grudge or with hate or with all those feelings that don't help winning conflicts. We are trying to be here cool as cyborgs because otherwise we won't win this fight against the Spanish state or you won't win your fight against Westminster or UK. Intelligence tells us that we're being hacked by the ones we consider our own. The Scottish referendum was so blatantly rigged and it's so blatant that that couldn't have been done without the huge endorsement of the leaders of the SNP and everybody else on the yes side. And we know that Nicola Sturgeon and Angus Robertson and uh, Alex Hammond are members of the Privy Council. So these people are, by definition, impossible uh, independent leaders. And then you realize you've had uh, majorities in Westminster, majorities in Holyrood, and you are not independent. Uh, because independence, neither for Catalonia and Scotland, it's not in the books. So this genocide that we've been suffering is... Uh, it has two um, direct uh, factors inciting on how have Catalans been able to be fooled in a way that would seem to be impossible. Well, 300 years of genocide means that everything we love is run by Spain even when it's supposed to be run by people pretending to be against Spain. That's the huge deception. Our cultural institutions, our political parties, our media, our social media, our organizations, everything you can name, has people that Spain has helped, either by slow infiltration, by climbing up the ranks, or in the last years by creating platforms that they have money and they appear out of nowhere. With these platforms has helped everybody who's anybody in, in Catalonia since president, President of Parliament, Deputy uh, President, uh, Mayor of Barcelona, President, uh, everybody you can name that is relevant in the Catalan process has not gone there through the normal rank and file being member of a political party. They have been parachuted in by their membership or their relevance in platforms that have been invented to help them rise to the top uh, immediately. So this genocide means that everything we love is occupied by the enemy. Genocide also has another psychological effect, which is the best roots, the best branches, the best genes in Catalonia have been exterminated. When you are decimated every now and then and some young uh, people are killed or executed or the, your intellectuals go into prison or into exile or they get scared pathologically, then you stop uh, acting like a normal country and fear and lots of other factors make it easier for you to be fooled. So this was necessary to explain why the enormous deception that has been played on Catalans for the last eight years in the Catalan process that we hear today we consider dead. Uh, independence process is that long live independence fight. Uh, th with this situation, now it's important to forget about everything you get here, it just, uh, everything you get in Scotland, it just like pass from everything we get in Catalonia, which is a lie. And if you can think, it's the reflect uh, effect here. We haven't heard about the Scottish referendum ringing, but that's because in Scottish media, they consider the Scottish referendum ringing as something to be mocked about. And I remember articles in the wings of Scotland where they ridiculed those saying that the Scottish referendum had been rigged. All those that tried to go through the proceedings to denounce the rigging had been massacred uh, politically and bureaucratically by, by the ones that they deemed to be on their side. So it's impossible for here to talk about the Scottish referendum rigging if our sources are contaminated at the origin, which is in Scotland. The same thing happens to you. You have no chance to get any truth about Catalonia except Radio Hedrion because everything that gets published in Catalonia it's a lie on both sides. We learn from uh, Leo Strauss that you need to fool everybody every time. So if you are if you are nice enough to go through all the chapters we've done previously, you'll understand situation better. As I said before, it's essential to focus on what the objectives are, what the strategy is, what the teams are 
to sum up the process up to here and what the present situation in Catalonia is. By doing that, if you are nice enough, you can spread knowledge all over the world to the millions of people that want to know what's going on here so they can understand a bit better and a tiny better how the world works. The objectives of the world, the world don't want countries belonging to European Union or countries belonging to NATO to split. So um, both Scotland and Catalonia are doomed if we follow the procedures that are devised by our enemies that don't want our independence. Well, it's normal. It's like going into a duel and your weapon is uh, not loaded because the, the person you think that is helping you has unloaded it. So you, you're going to suicide. It's not a duel, it's a suicide. So what the objectives are here is that I'll, I'll speak about Catalonia but always you can think it's the same more or less unless I say so about Scotland. So the first objective is not to get independence in Catalonia. That's main objective. Secondarily, but that has to be done through ways that can keep lying people about the existence of democracy in Western Europe. Democracy doesn't exist anywhere in the world. It doesn't. We only have fake images of a projection of democracy, but democracy don't exist. So, but the fiction is that in Europe or in the United States or Australia or what we call this, this the Western world, uh, democracy exists. So, that's when referendums rigged in the style of Scotland or in Quebec or anywhere else provide this uh, illusion of democracy so people can keep being fooled in the way Mark Twain defined. So we have avoiding independence but doing it in a so-called democratic way. The third objective is to keep the moles that are murdering independence in place so they can keep lying to us in the long term. We said in a few chapters ago that only those you trust can betray you. Only those that you listen to can lie to you. Only those you believe in uh, can, can deceive you. Only those you give your heart to can break it. And only those that are close to you can stab you in the back. It is essential for the powers that be that Scottish people keep believing in Nicola Sturgeon, that Catalan people can keep believing in Carlos Puigdemont, because that way, Carlos Puigdemont and Nicola Sturgeon can keep killing and murdering our independences, because if people realize there are moles working for the other side, uh, everything would crumble, everything would go under. So we have defined these three objectives. The fourth objective is to avoid contagion. We've heard it said from the horse's mouth, uh, junkers from uh, European Union saying he doesn't want to run a European Union with 98 states or 90 states, 90 countries. So they don't want the contagion effect. So if people realized in Catalonia that we've been had and that we've been deceived by the media, politicians, and everything we love, it would take about seven seconds to people realize that it's the same thing in Scotland, uh, Euskal Herria. Wales, Northern Ireland, uh, you name it, Flanders, Corsica, Veneto, anywhere in Europe and in other parts of the world. So they need to avoid contagion. But a fifth one and a sixth one, it happens with empires and Spain, hard as it might be to believe now, it's been one of the biggest empires in history. So. Um, they uh, have two more objectives. One is to murder Catalan independence forever. And the best way to do that, because somebody says, oh, if they want to kill it, why have they let like all this demonstration go and all this thing to proceed? Precisely to kill it forever and also to avoid contagion. They've let us go through the proceedings for eight years with demonstrations and two mock referendums and two fake declarations of independence the 10th on 27th of October and now they're gonna murder it but they're gonna murder it forever because now they're doing uh, companies are moving away from Catalonia we've had police violence we've had uh, strikes we've had uh, roads being cut we have our government though it's mockery but they're in prison and people will realize that after eight years like that it didn't work, we better forget independence forever and we just try to get for a bigger devolution and 
forget about the independence forever. So that's why it was necessary to do it in such a cruel way. They let us celebrate independence for eight seconds, the 10th of October. They lied to us when they didn't declare independence the 27th of October. That's why the Spanish flag is still in Catalan government. They didn't publish it in the official bulletins where you publish laws. They went to declare to Madrid as cool as cucumbers and all these things that are incompatible with having declared independence. And one last one is mockery. In, it might not seem important, but United Kingdom and Spain and the Bilderbergs and NATOs and uh, Trilaterals and uh, United uh, European Union, all these unions that are run against the people, they like to mock us. Because they like to make us think, oh, when we are demonstrating for people that are Catalan and that are being uh, interned or being imprisoned, while well, not, they are high-profile Spanish infiltrators that are mocking us for the last eight years. And they use our days. They put a referendum the 1st of, of uh, October, which is the Franco Day. And now they're going to have people marching in Brussels the 6th of December, which is the day of the Spanish Constitution. So people will think that they're doing something in the nose of Spain, the day of constitution, while it's a demonstration which is organized by Spain, the day of their constitution, to have Catalans wasting time, illu uh, illusions or motivation and money to go to Brussels to march in a Spanish-run demonstration against Spain to demand the freeing of Spanish Asians. How much bigger mockery can be? So we clarified this. Objectives are to avoid independence, to do it in a pretend uh, democratic way, to protect the moles running Catalonia, to avoid contagion, to murder independence through national depression forever, and to mock us. And these six objectives are being accomplished with a strategy, which is they didn't do a referendum and they didn't declare independence in 2014 when we were at our biggest difference. We had 40 points difference for independence. Now, through tiredness, through crisis, through violence, through uh, things running, we've lost that difference, and now it's possible to say that they've managed us to be in a majority, no matter what opinion poll says, because we know they all lie. And the strategy to kill independence, as we've been saying consistently for the last four years and for the last 21 chapters here in uh, Radio Hadrian, is to murder it through a Scottish-style referendum, which is the way they have to murder independence inside European Union members or NATO members, like they did in Quebec and in Scotland. And to do that, they need to raise the tension. We need, they need to go through the proceedings, so tension goes higher with people in prison, with police violence, so... There's going to be some sort of constitutional change in Spain that allows a referendum to happen or some international mediation uh, for, for an agreement to be reached so they can murder independence through a Scottish-style referendum which accomplishes the six objectives we set. Avoid independence, respect the image of democracy, keep the infiltrators in place so they can keep us uh, subdued for a longer time, avoid contagion, Murder it forever because they keep them, they keep the molds in place and mock us because we keep voting somebody who cries against Spain but are highly placed um, Spanish police agents. So if it wasn't so hard and if my life wasn't at risk and if they hadn't threatened me and destroyed my life and if they hadn't committed terrorism from, against me, putting me in a mental institution for 62 days, I would applaud them. But as all these things happened, and I am compromised to bring down the Spanish state in Catalonia to declare independence, I won't. The teams going here, and that's similar to any place in the world, every team, every option we get offered, it's run by the ones that deem themselves to be gods and to run the world. So we have the unionist side, which is the official one, but then we have the processes side or the pro indie side, which is also run by Spain which is President Puigdemont, Vice President Junqueras, President of Parliament Carla, Carma Furcadell, all the so-called pro-Indie media, all the so-called pro-Indie organizations, all the so-called Facebook groups, all the so-called uh, profiles hiding under the stelada, all those words for Spain. And what we see is a fake conflict like the Washington diplomats trying to beat the Harlem Globetrotters were never succeeding, all this uh, wrestling uh, competition, which is a show and not a competition. 
And to complement that, we have the pro agreement side with Ada Colau, Pablo Iglesias of Podemos, and some media as well, which are the ones that are promoting an agreed referendum, the Scottish style. And those that team, we explained Pablo Iglesias is a New World Order project in Chapter 6. We explained how fake Ada Colau, the major of Barcelona, is in Chapter 7. We debunked WikiLeaks in Chapter 8, WikiLeaks that has also made some cameo appearances in the Catalan uh, independence fight. And we need to realize that everything is a gigantic scam. And you, you cannot free Scotland or you cannot free Catalonia without bringing the whole system down. That's why we know that fighting for Catalan's independence, we're fighting for every good cause in the world. Then you have the confusionists. We, you, we still have some tiny splinter groups that criticize the official pro the side, but they also work for Spain. So all those that get disappointed with the official line are going to land in the hands of yet another Spanish team, which are the limited hangouts or gatekeepers. And all those four teams, what we call pactists, the unionist, processists, and confusionists or gatekeepers, they go into each other media and they fake, uh, in, they go to panels and they pretend to take opposite positions, but they work for the same thing. Everybody works for the same thing on top, except the pro the people, the real pro the people, which is represented by the Resistencia Independentista Catalana, which has Radio Hadrian as its uh, only loudspeaker for the time being, don't we preparing others. And now we have explained the objective, the strategy, and the teams. It's good to sum up the Catalan process and to tell what the present situation is. Uh, the Catalan process activated in 2009, where we started having uh, um, uh, people run uh, non-binding consultations for independence in individual towns. It started in Arrange the Moon, the 13th of September uh, 2009, which is two days after demonstrations are held. And it went up to 553 uh, municipalities, including Barcelona, in 2011. Uh, millions of people, Catalan, voted for independence. And that was the, the spark that put together with a party called Reagrupament and with a business union run by my friend Ramon Garnet called the Cercle Catalan de Negocis, Catalan's, uh, Catalan business uh, circle. All those things set the alarm in Spain. I mean, contrary to what we think, that they're only thugs, and the British are thugs, and the Spanish are thugs, and they make mistakes, and they attack us, and they grow the independentism. It doesn't matter. They can grow it and burst it, because everybody running the pro indie movement in Scotland and everybody running the pro indie movement in Catalonia work for our enemies. So they don't care if they pump it up with their attacks, because they know they can burst it, because they know that our generals work for them, so they will never declare independence. So they can attack us knowing that our side will never react properly to the attacks. So those things were real, Spain felt threatened, so they created Asamblea Nacional Catalana, whose president is now in prison, so that will tell you. And um, they controlled everything. They created a fake independentist party called Solidaridad, to which I belonged because I was fooled, but then I've been managed to be convinced that I was fooled, so I've awoken, I'm awake now. And they dismantled that. And then from 2010, everything you've seen, everything we've seen, is post-mortem and is a film. This film called Catalan Independence is a film which is uh, scripted, produced, directed and acted by Spaniards. And we Catalans are only the stunts, only the extra, only the supporting actors that go to manifest demonstrations, uh, pot and pan revolutions, uh, voting, uh, cutting roads, striking, and doing everything Spain, as we explained about Pavlovian dogs, Spain knows that they act on some of our side, which happen to work for their side, and they know we're going to react with demonstration pots and pans, uh, doing strikes and doing things, because it's organized by them. So... We had a mock referendum in 2014 with, an, with a question done by President Artur Mas to make impossible that independence would happen. Then they lied to us again in elections that were supposed to bring UDI in 2015, the 27th of September. And then Spanish Mall running our side said that we hadn't won, but we had won. And then they lost another year to do a referendum that was not in the roadmap because they should have declared then and then. And then... Catalan government and Catalan 
President of Parliament did a mock declaration of independence the 10th of October and they repeated that the 27th of October. So we've been betrayed four times, four times, much worse than in Scotland now. Four times we've been deceived by our own side. So now the situation of, in the process is as follows. The process as it was, we declared dead because we've been mocked for too long and now some people are waking up and these people are going to join the resistance and some people will uh, stay there till the moment arrive. But the, the present situation now is the objective as we announce here, we've been mocked, we've been betrayed, independence has been killed, but now the objective of Spain, as we said in this program, is to protect the traitors so they can keep betraying us and so betrayal don't get exposed. And that's why, and I'll try to put it in historical terms, now we have more than half our government is imprisoned in Spain and the president and some other three members of, uh, some other four members of Catalan government are in a pseudo or fake or mock exile in Brussels. And this, which to the lesser informed and to those that act only on emotions and not with brain, is a source of pity for them, solidarity, support, endorsement. Perish the thought. That's not what they deserve. They betrayed us twice at the service of Spain, not declaring independence, the 10th of the 27th. They have mocked us in front of the eyes of the world. They've ridiculed us, they've lied to us, they've betrayed us, and they saved the unity of Spain, which is the contrary of what they deem to be working for. That by any language, by any definition, that's high treason. It's high treason. And then half of them go voluntarily to one enemy court or one foreign court, if you want it, and they go there on their own free will instead of making themselves be detained in Barcelona, which would be international aggression because we're supposed to have declared independence. But as we haven't, they have to make things that don't conflict and then don't make people realize that nothing happened. And then the other half run away. I'll put this in historical terms so we see clearly what the treason is. Imagine in 1714 is when we lost uh, our independence, our laws, our constitutions in the hands of Castile, which is nowadays Spain. And that happened after a long siege by a gigantic army at the doors of Barcelona and the citizens defended it. So having two mock declarations of independence, if we put it in that context, amounts to while the citizens of Barcelona are sleeping, their government and their parliament open the doors of the city to the enemy. But not only that, they've been poisoning the wells, so the defenders are either dying or incapable of defending themselves. That is what amounts to doing two fake declarations of independence, after people have been beaten the 1st of October. That's the level of treason we're talking here. And then, those that have opened the doors of the city and poisoned our wells, half of them handle themselves to the enemy, which is not the enemy because they work for them, and half the other escape from us and go to Brussels, but they pretend they're running away from the Spaniards. Brilliant, isn't it? They're hiding from us because people are going to awake. These guys are like the guys that did the Emperor's New Dress, which was a fake. So they're running away before people realize that the dress was a fake. So some are safe in Brussels and some are safe in a Spanish prison. They're not heroes. They're not politicians. They're not Catalans. They are traitors. They are actors. And they are working for Spain and the New World Order. Because as we said, now the main thing is to protect the treason and protect the traitors. And the only way Spain could do that is by pretending to attack them. And I'll put another example because it's a difficult point, but we need to open the eyes of people to this basic truth because people are blinded by their emotions. And I'll explain a bit more about uh, cognitive dissonance after, after I finish this point. The only way to protect them is to attack them because it works on reverse psychology. Imagine, you know, like this typical infiltrator in a drug band and then police comes and out of 12 people there's two there which are infiltrators.
Well, of course they're not gonna be greedier than I am. Oh, how's your handicapping golf going these days, mate? And what about uh, wife and children? Because they would be killed the next day because the word would spread that these two guys were infiltrators. So of course they have to be uh, handcuffed and they have to be treated the same way as if they were drug dealers and they have to be put in prison and then they have to find a way that justifies that they're let out. It's the same thing here. Life is stranger than fiction. To accept this, that should be obvious and then we'll go into some chapters and we'll avoid things that might not be of general interest. We are facing cognitive dissonance of a tremendous kind here. First, we have to accept that every politician, every media, every panelist, every social organization we love works for the enemy. So the enormous cognitive dissonance here on the emotional side, that on itself is huge. And a lot of people don't have uh, what it takes to accept this. But secondly, it means accepting we've been fooled and taken for idiots for the biggest ride of our lives for eight years. Every day during eight years, we've been lied by those that we love. We've been treated like hamsters. We've been treated like cockroaches. That's what we are for them. So it's, uh, so it's not uh, saying something which is very far away from the truth. That is gigantic for somebody who is a successful uh, professional, a businessman, uh, a successful worker, a successful family member, somebody who's respected, somebody who has an idea of himself, of somebody who's enlightened and writes and works in an NGO or in a political party, reads newspapers, somebody that has that image of himself, to accept that you've been taken as the worst idiot, but not only you, but everybody else but you, that is enormous. So it's a second reason for cognitive dissonance to be acting. The image of ourselves and our egos. I had to accept I had been lied for 25 years and I managed to do that and it was a trauma. But I overcame. And now we're going to declare independence but with the 10,000 heroes that are going to awake 3 million people. And then there's a third one. We know there's been murders here. They put me in a mental institution to shut me up. They tortured me. We don't know how many other people have been killed or put in a mental place or blackmailed or threatened or hit by these criminals that are supposed to be running Catalonia to independence. So not only accepting that the people we love works for the enemy, not only accepting we've been taken for fools, it also means accepting we live in a dictatorship. And that's very scary. So we have ego, love and fear all working to help cognitive dissonance. And that's why this thing, which is so obvious, that being lied by these traitors for eight years, that if you act with your intellectual side of the brain or your logical side, it is obvious, all that is obstaculized, all that is uh, hindered by our love for the what we love, our self-perception of our ego, oh, it couldn't happen to us because we're not idiots. Well, it has happened to us and it's time to awake. And, well, we would live in a very dark world where we're just uh, puppets and we follow flutists and we're little more than hamsters and people get murdered and it's very scary. I thought that by marching and voting we could be independent and, whoa, it means risking job, risking family, risking freedom and maybe risking life. Oof. No, no, I'd rather follow the flutist and, well, if in the end it couldn't be, well, it's destiny, it's fate, it was not meant to be. Well, independence in Catalonia is not only meant to be, but it's going to happen. And then we're going to fill in our compromise and help our Scottish brothers to become independent in a matter of weeks as well. So it is going to happen because... Uh, staying with your head under the sand is not an option. The truth is the truth and truth will prevail. And truth will only, only truth will set us free. And we are doing this. After we've clarified strategy, objective, present situation, it is easier to go in peculiar chapters that will be very clear. The people put in prison cannot be real in the sense of if the declaration was fake, if the fight for independence has been fake at, at the high levels, not not on the bottom levels because we want it and we're gonna get it. Repression can only be fake. 
These people, Puigdemont, Junqueras, the Catalan government, the Catalan president of the parliament, have been working for Spain, well, Junqueras, from 1990, as we say in chapter 4. We have explained Carlos Puigdemont in chapter 3 in Radio Adrian. Uh, everything is a farce, and they've been working for the other side all their lives. So, uh, how can you imprison somebody that works for you and somebody who's a Spanish national hero? These people have avoided independence for eight years, especially in the four times we mentioned before, 2014, 2015, and twice in October 2017. They are Spanish national heroes. Everything we see is a mockery to both lie to unionists and to lie to independentists because we're both being lied. Some people in Spain hate Puigdemont, Junqueras, and Furcadell because they wrongly think they're independentists. And lots of Catalans love Puigdemont, Junqueras, and Furcadell because they wrongly think they're independentists. But we know from uh, Leo Strauss that 99% of population needs to be permanently, systematically being deceived. So, a unionist hating Puigdemont and an independentist loving Puigdemont for being independentist, they're both wrong. They're on opposite sides. The unionist should love him because he's a Spanish agent that has murdered independence, and independentists should hate him because he's a traitor. And that here in Catalonia we've had a victimization to keep people not thinking that we've been betrayed the 10th and the 27th, but to keep seeing, oh, Spanish police on a tape uh, mocking the the prisoners, and the prisoners have been handcuffed on the back and not on the front, and all this victimization. Well, there's three different protocols. Real independentists get murdered like Muriel Casals was, or we get interned in a mental institution and chemically tortured to get our brains destroyed. That's what real independents get. Uh, mock, det uh, mock detention to become heroes, that's what you give your infiltrators. Spain is not an idiot, they don't make heroes, they are doing this because these people are working on their own side. And that's why we see the victimization and that's everything that goes with it. And then everything we see for the last eight years has been run by Spain. Now we've had a strike last week which uh, damages Catalan economy. We've had train and road cuts which bring people towards no independence. And we have a demonstration, we had a demonstration yesterday which cannot be faker. We're talking about a fake indie movement with fake declarations of independence which has brought about fake repression. Repression cannot be real if independence and declarations were fake. If declaration and in the movement was real, repression of Spain would be real. If declaration of independence were fake, repression is fake. So then we're having a fake demonstration where people will march for people who are fakely detained because they fakely or falsely declared independence. It, it grows worse by the day, isn't it? And then also, they're planning to do a march in Brussels where people will go in buses and march there the day of the Spanish Constitution. Uh, and it's organized by Spanish malls as well. And it's wasting money, time, illusions, and not focusing on the real truth, which is our side has let us down because we're not strong enough to accept we'll be betrayed. I'll go into something, not in very detail, but it's something that then again, it proves it. We have a very big problem, which is people prefer a, a, a sweet lie than a hard truth. So we are facing people here that it's, you see as this image of monkeys that are covering their eyes, their mouths and their ears. People don't want to hear the truth. It's very hard to think that everything you love is fake. It's like... Truman, in the Truman Show, realizing that everything he loves is fake, that his life is not real. That's, we have to have three million Trumans going through their own traumas, and from the Catalans uh, in the resistance, we're going to help them go through that trauma. But everything we see is a lie. We already explained in previous chapter that nothing happened in Catalonia as it should had independence been declared, but also on the Spanish side, we have evidence that independence didn't happen. Because 
Spain has supplied among big fan parties Article 155, which has some minor, minor inconveniences as dismantling a government, a government that was full of infiltrators, and a parliament, a parliament which is full of Spanish moles. And they didn't occupy Catalan television because Catalan television already is infiltrated by them. So if they officially take it over, then Catalans would stop believing in it. So the mental genocide of Catalans wouldn't be half as effective if they took it over. So they decided not to take it over, though it was supposed to be in the objectives of 155. Okay, but this 155 falls clearly short of what would be happening where independence true. And we need to start realizing, uh, analyzing reality to realize what goes behind the scenes. Spanish constitution has an article which is not 155, it's 116, which regulates the stages of the situations of alarm, exception, and siege. And they have a, what's called here organic law, which are these laws that are of special importance, so they require specific majorities in parliament to be passed, but this law passed it. And it clarifies that for the state of siege, which is the more relevant one, which goes with uh, limitation of rights like demonstration, reunion, expression, uh, opinion, all these things, and with limitation of movement, all, all this kind of very re restrictive situation, is supposed to apply in two cases. One is the subversion of the constitutional legal order, which has been happening here officially for the last years, and, listen well, the declaration of independence of some part of the Spanish territory, which is what is supposed to have happened here. So, we have one article in the Constitution, which has been specifically devised to be applied in the situation we are clearly having here, which is subversion of the constitutional uh, situation, and second, declaration of independence of part of the territory, and they don't apply it. They don't even talk about it in media. It's such a farce. Nothing is. It's like it was a dream. It's like it's been a dream. It's been a dream, they declare independence, and then you wake up, and the world is like it was before, because nothing has happened. All this state of situation brings the Catalan resistance to give freedom of vote in these elections. These are not our elections. We're setting up a movement that doesn't go through these referendums, mock elections, mock demonstrations, mock strikes, and mock everything you can name. The choice here, if we're going, if this is a foreign election ordered by a foreign power, which is Spain and in which we can only choose official Spanish uh, parties like Partido Popular, Partido Socialista, or Ciudadanos, or Podemos, or Spanish parties dressed and disguised as Catalan parties like PDCAT of President Puigdemont, Esquerra Republicana de Catalunya of Deputy President Uriol Junqueras, or CUP, the supposed anti-capitalist and supposed independentists, but we have already proven there none of the two things. So, these elections, we're not going to dedicate from the Catalan resistance any effort in convincing people what they should do. Uh, we think people should uh, face them like going to the cinema, or they can choose the food they want, because none of these parties will bring independence. This is only instrumental elections to advance closer to the murder of independence through a Scottish-style referendum. In that level of things, We've had a letter signed by 107 more or less known people in the political uh, field. Most of them were supposed to be independentists, but they clarified they're not. These 170 people have signed the typical uh, manifesto in which they, they want prisoners to be set free, but we know they're not prisoners. Uh, they want Article 155 not to be applied, but we already clarified that 155 is mockery for 116, which would be applied. And... Uh, they um, they are pushing for a Scottish-style referendum that would settle things. So that means that people, the thousand people that were injured the 1st of October for a referendum, did it for nothing because that was not a real referendum. So it is easy to make the list of the traitors that have lied to us. It's as easy as picking up the list of these 170 people and you add it to the list of the hundreds of people we already know that have betrayed us and the list will be a bit longer. Um, 
there's a bit of shenanigans of if the Catalan president will go with his own party or with another list or now it's all a matter of confusion to avoid us thinking that we shouldn't go to these elections and we should be calling our traitors to respond for what they've done. But their time will come. They shouldn't be afraid of Spain. They should be afraid of the courts of the Catalan independent country. I don't use republic, though republic is probably what we will be. But we have already explained that the term republic has been used to blatantly promote Esquerra Republicana de Catalunya, which is the infiltrated party which is supposed to take over Catalonia and to be the equivalent of the Scottish National Party, which is to run Scotland for the British and he will be to run Catalonia for the Spaniards. So um, I'll just finish with three little chapters. One is, there's been an interview with President Carlos Puigdemont from Brussels in Catalonia Radio, in which him, the one that has fakely declared independence twice, the one that needed some people to be threatened to become mayor, the one that's only president because Spanish spy uh, Juan Vives and Sulevicens made him. It's important to see chapter three on the infiltration of Puigdemont and number five Number four, the infiltration of Junqueras. Number five, who the spy Joan Vives and Sule Vicens, of which I'll talk later, uh, are. So these three chapters are very important, and so are six, seven, or eight on Colau, uh, Podemos, and Wikileaks. Okay, so the first eight chapters really should be should be important to understand what goes on in Catalonia, which we explain from chapter thirteen. It's important that everybody hears all of the chapters. So Carlos Puigdemont makes this interview in the. Catalan public radio station and he says that well yes independence is technically possible that comes a few days after he supposed to have been declared and he says well we couldn't expect Spain would react in such a violent way excuse me the country of Franco uh, Gal terrorist squad inquisition genocide in America Philip the fourth Philip the fifth you name it. After they've been exerting genocide against us for 300 years, you say that you didn't expect them to react violent? Well, either you are incapable and you are not competent to the level of idiocy to run a country, so you should be deposed and never talk that, or you were a traitor lying to us, which, considering the way you, Carlos Puigdemont, reached power, Considering what we know about you and explained in chapter 3, considering you have fakely declared independence twice, and considering you run away from Catalans to hide yourself in Brussels, well, any computer will tell that you are a traitor. And your day of reckoning will come. But not you shouldn't be afraid of Spanish courts, because you are a Spanish agent, and they're only protecting you. You should be afraid of the Nuremberg-style court, we're going to have to put all those that deem to be Catalan but that work for Spain. And they would have to face the Catalan people about treason or about genocide. He also said that it's going to be hard and this is going to be long. Longer than 303 years, put them on. Longer than eight years of processes with demonstration, voting, mock referendum, mock, mock declaration, strikes. Uh, longer than this, put them on. No. And then in the end, he takes us 40 years back saying that we should get the prisoners out and get 155 out and declare and push for democracy and all these things. It's We have come back 40 years back in time. Only one month in Catalonia has taken us back to the end of Franco time, which now we know it never ended. So it's all been mockery for the last 40 years. Then again, he talks about fake prisoners being let out. A fake article which shouldn't be in place being stopped and asking for democracy and this thing that clarifies why they had uh, these organizations calling for referendum on democracy because independence was not in the books. So sadly, it's so sad to have been right, so right from the start. But the truth is what it is and not what we'd like it to be. So, uh, Bush Domon is a traitor, he's fake. Everything about him is fake. We explain in chapters 3, and it's time everybody in the world to know. Don't cry for a traitor. And all these things about staying there clarifies why Snowden and Assange are also fake. And everybody works together to, to, to this mockery everywhere in the world. 
I I met accidentally Joan Vives and Sule Vicente. This guy is the is the kingmaker in Catalan politics. And the last time I had met him, he was with his also infiltrated Anarche, which is uh, relevant in Scotland. And they were very aggressive towards me, and they were trying to influence what I said. And now with I met him, he was very relaxed. And that means that everything they want is in place. They managed two fake declarations. They managed people not to lynch Puigdemont Junqueras before they could run away. They have this mock election the 21st of December, and they know that everything is set on plan. But at least he accepted two interesting things. He said that Carlos Puigdemont is a mole, and that the good is Uriol Junqueras. Which is funny because he did telemarketing to help Carlos Puigdemont to be president. So we have, it can only be a mole, is it? Somebody that has been campaigning for somebody. And now, when that stage has been reached, and he's already president, and Spain wants Uriol Junqueras, which is now in prison, to be the next president, Spanish agents are pushing for Junqueras now, because his time has come. But then he also grudgingly accepted that after 300 years, everything we love should be in the hands of Spain. I said, well, I have to agree to that. And he also had to concede that Asamblea Nacional Catalana and Solidaridad, which are supposed to be two of the main things that happen in the Catalan process, were fake. And he only tried to extract his own partner, Anarche, saying, yes, yes, Solidaridad was a fake for Spain, but my partner not. So that's the truth delivered to you. Uh, Spanish spies that have put Junqueras and Puigdemont in the place they are are already uh, promoting Junqueras and attacking Puigdemont because he's done his part. They accept everything in Catalonia is run by Assad. They also accept it. I said, like, listen, and it's the same in Scotland because he mentioned Alex Salmond. I said, listen, you know that Nicola Sturgeon, Alex Salmond are British moles. He said, well, yeah, well... Yeah, well, more or less, but but it's worse with Angus Robertson. I say no, no, and Angus Robertson is as well a mole, and so is your friend Angus Brandon McNeil, and he kind of stuttered. So I take it for an acceptance from a very high place, New World Order mole, that has his partner, uh, Anarche, and his ex partner Lisanda Palusier have been doing conferences with Stephen Noon here in Barcelona, and these people who are very active in rotting the Catalan process and also in the Scottish process so that's the truth for you and the last thing last thing I want to comment is there's a very famous journalist here Tony Sule Tony Sule is the brain behind Polonia Polonia is like a spitting image that has been on here about Catalan politics for 12 years it's one of the most seen programs and has been in charge of brainwashing us and making us think that our side worked for independence so he'll also have his day of reckoning in um, in the Catalan Nuremberg. Then this week we've had Amnesty International saying that the Catalan prisoners are not political prisoners. So, and this has been published in La Cio Digital, which is a Catalan supposedly pro indie pamphlet, and has been spread around in the Facebook so called pro indie media. So we have six actors here. This Tony Suledi journalist, which is also the guy that infiltrated Rilal Junqueras in Catalan television in 2005 uh, and now that has been given a program in Catalan television so he can keep brainwashing us more so of the six actors here the way the world has us believe it it would be Amnesty International in siding with Spain and then we have Tony Soler the journalist Nació Digital the pamphlet that publishes it the Catalan prisoners and the Facebook people that spreads it would be on the Catalan side well that's not the truth these six actors work together to keep us hooked in this enormous soap opera, which is the Catalan process. Tony Soler works for Spain. Amnesty International, we know that it's a cover for MI5, MI6. Nació Digital is a newspaper that is pushing for Scottish-style referendum, which means working for Spain. The Catalan prisoners, we've already clarified that they're Spanish malts that are put there to keep us deceived. Spain obviously works for Spain. And most of the profiles in Facebook that deem to be independentists are secret service Spanish agents or are not very bright people that have been dragged by agents to collaborate with them. So I wanted to give this example because it clarifies how things work. They exemplified a tiff with Tony Soler, the journalist, Nacio Digital, the newspaper, the Catalan prisoners and the Facebook activists supposed to be for Catalonia and Amnesty International on the other side, but not. 
because they're all calling attention to a mockery because these people are in prison but not for the real reasons so it's just distraction and intoxication and I wanted to clarify that last and to finish this and thanks for staying with us and please share this because the threats have been going up the pressure I'm going under is stronger I've had it from several sources people being uh, pressured to stop being my friends on Facebook I've been suffering attacks because this is one of the few things that Spain doesn't have under control so we're a real threat to them okay so please spread this I don't know for a number of reasons technological uh, financial uh, how long we keep doing this program so please spread it I'll just answer a question that happens and I, it comes to me a lot of times like people say oh my you are always attacking the independentists well they're not independentists so that's the first mistake in that argument but you never say anything about unionists like PP and PSO and Ciudadanos won't you be that you work for them undercover well this sadly is and I don't take it badly because it's people are only trying to defend their faith with uh, with idiotic arguments like this so I don't take offense on these things I already explained in the last chapters independence can only be murdered by people deeming to be independentist that they postpone things they betray us they do fake declarations they they do things they shouldn't be doing of course Pepe and Pessoa and Ciudadanos are unionists and of course I despise them and of course they are part of the genocide we are going under for 300 years but they're blatant they're the official enemy it's like throwing cabbages at them again in 1714 yeah they're outside the walls of the city and you pee on them or you th it, yeah so what they are the enemy and they're doing the enemy job they are there but we have to see that nowadays the enemy this war is not a gun war it's a psychological war so when these people attack us it is to distract us from the fact that Puigdemont, Junqueras, Coop, Karma Furcadell, TV3, everybody else is stabbing us in the back those are doing the dirty work while we are watching at Pepe Persoe Ciudadanos and we're looking away we're looking 600 kilometers away to Madrid Puigdemont, Junqueras, Furcadell, our media, our social organizations are murdering independence by stabbing it in the back so it is very cheap, it's very easy, doesn't have any risk, doesn't require any intelligence, doesn't require anything to bark against Rajoy, Soraya, Constitutional Court, Spanish media, to bark at them, it's what they want. We are barking like Pavlovian dogs to the ones that are the official enemy, so the ones we trust can stab us in the back and then run away to Brussels or seek protection in a Spanish prison like Puigdemont, Junqueras and Forcadell. We are resisting. Spain thinks they have won. We still stay in put. More people are contacting the Catalan resistance. We are stronger than ever because our opinions and versions for the last four years have been proven utterly right. We're gonna help you go over your trauma. We're organizing ourselves. We're creating a new political force that will declare independence soon without these processes. We are winning. We are going to win. Let's do this. Visca Catalunya Lliura. Guanyarem. This is Hedrian Video coming to you from Free Catalonia, a KE Video production.